Hello and welcome back to the ICU doc. This is Gabriel Prada and here is a quick lecture about long ultrasound where we will go through the basics for optimal image acquisition. The main diagnostic targets of long ultrasound include pneumothorax, pneumonia, pleural effusion, pulmonary edema, and endotracheal intubation. As you can see, we've got a pretty good compound of evidence already in the form of meta-analysis and systematic reviews for each of these applications. These are the main applications we will go through over the next video lectures. But first, we need to learn how to obtain adequate images. This is the single most important skill in long ultrasound, and I would say in any ultrasound application. In long ultrasound, adequate image acquisition requires that you adjust your long ultrasound exam according to the pathologies you are suspecting or want to rule out. The following approach provides practical stepwise guidance summarized in four points or four P's. The first P is for patient positioning, that is, whether the patient should be lying flat or semi-sitting. The second P is for probe selection, whether you use the linear high frequency or the phase array low frequency probe, or both. The third P is for protocol selection, that is, the scanning regions over the patient's chest. And the last P is for picture optimization which involves tips for probe manipulation and nebology. When you want to evaluate for pneumothorax, patient positioning must be supine and flat because you want the air of the pneumothorax to be located over the anterior chest. That's the place where you will place your ultrasound probe. Air will move up, right? For pleural effusion, the opposite concept applies. Patient positioning must be semi-sitting at 30 to 45 degrees because you want the fluid of the effusion to be located in the posterior aspect of the costophrenic angle, since that's the place you will place your ultrasound probe. Fluid will move down to dependent areas, right? Regarding probe selection, the linear high-frequency probe should be used for pleural assessment, pneumothorax, and endotracheal intubation, whereas the phase array low-frequency probe should be used to assess the lung parenchyma, pulmonary edema, consolidations, and pleural effusions. For protocol selection, I would recommend following the BLUE protocol, proposed by Daniel Lichtenstein, the French intensivist who is regarded the father of long ultrasound. BLUE stands for bedside long ultrasound in emergency, and it proposes that long ultrasound be performed over three standard anatomic regions or zones on each hemithorax. Zone 1 refers to the anterior chest, over the second to fourth intercoursal spaces between the mid-clavicular line and the anterior axillary line. Zone 2 is located over the lateral chest, at the level of the diaphragm, from the seventh to the ninth intercoursal space between the mid and posterior axillary lines. And zone 3 is located posterior to the posterior axillary line and above the level of the diaphragm. Zone 1 is ideal for evaluation of pneumothorax and ventilation in the setting of endotracheal intubation. Zone 2 is ideal for assessment of pleural effusion. And all zones, including zone 3, should be scanned when evaluated for consolidations and pulmonary edema. Now that you know, according to the pulmonary pathologies you want to evaluate, how the patient must be positioned, what probe is the most appropriate, and what anatomic zones you should scan, you're pretty much ready to grab the probe, put some gel on it, and start scanning, right? For picture optimization, I will go over tips for probe manipulation and visual spatial orientation, such that you get the best image quality possible. Let's start with tips for scanning over zone 1 and 3. First, make sure the probe marker is pointing towards cephalad or 12 o'clock. As you can see here, the red arrow represents the orientation of the probe marker. Generally speaking, for long ultrasound, the probe indicator should always point towards 12 o'clock. Second, the probe must be perpendicular to the chest wall or rib cage. And third, you can slide the probe up and down until you are located over an intercostal space. But wait, how is that you can tell where you are over an intercostal space or not? Well, ribs will look like black shadows. And in between two ribs, you should see the plural line as a bright horizontal line, right? 
The goal is to slide up and down your probe until you see an image where there are ribbed shadows on each side of the screen and the horizontal plural line right in the center, just as you see in this image. You see in the center, there is the alveoli, which is air-filled like a normal lung, and on top of it, you see a blue horizontal line, which is the plural line. And on each side, you see the ribs with the projected shadow. But now let's see it in real life. Can you tell me where are the rib shadows? Hmm, there you got them. And the plural line? Yeah, cool, right? Now that you're on the right spot, the next step is to make the plural line horizontal, and you can do so by rocking your probe. This is very important. Keeping the plural line horizontal enhances image acquisition and therefore the quality of your exam. And the last step, is about searching for interesting findings, most of which will be artifacts. Tilting or fanning your probe back and forth will uncover important findings. Don't be shy in the tilting and fanning. For zone two, the first two steps are the same as previously described. The probe marker should point towards cephalat or 12 o'clock, and it should be perpendicular to the rib cage or chest wall. Then you should start scanning lower, at around the 10th intercostal space, and then it's slide cephalat until you see the diaphragm. Next, you can tilt or fan your probe such that you direct the ultrasound beam towards the patient's back, thus scanning over the posterior area of the costophrenic angle where pleural fluid will accumulate. And finally, you can rotate your probe a little bit to improve your view, since the ribs over zone 2 will have a diagonal orientation. You're just trying to sneak in between these two ribs to see what's inside. Here we can appreciate better how zone 2 should look like. On the right side, we have the ideal ultrasound view of zone 2, and on the left side, a CT image for better understanding. On the ultrasound image, the orientation marker is on the left. Therefore, the thoracic cavity will be over the left side of the image, and the abdominal cavity will be on the right. The diaphragm is seen as a bright, curved line. Below the diaphragm, that is, to the right side, we can see the liver or spleen and the kidneys. And posterior to this structure, we can see these shadows, which are the vertebra bodies. Above the diaphragm, that is, to the left, the shadow represents a normal lung because it's filled with air, so we cannot see it anything with ultrasound. Thank you for watching. Make sure you check out our website a YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and share.